Okay, thank you. Data, 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 data. The microphone seems to be working, so we are good to go. Data is at the moment one of the hottest topics of discussion, not just here today, but around the world. And uh, one perspective to the topic is the imbalance and intransparency that takes place when it comes to the usage of our personal data. To put it short, people and organizations and governments around the world have begun to worry whether it's a good idea or not that these monopoly-like giants like Facebook, Google and Amazon are by far the greatest beneficiaries in this so-called new era of data economy. More and more people are asking if there's any kind of an alternative path. Is there a fairer way to create better services and wealth with new ways of using data from multiple sources that, in a ways that we can't even imagine at the moment? So is there another path? That's what we are here to find out. And when I say we, I mean, among with all the other you guys here, uh, I mean our team from the Finnish Innovation Fund, Citra. Citra has just recently made a decision to start a new project aiming to enable human-driven data economy. This project aims to create a set of standards, a protocol for people to have better control over their own data and for people to have a say in how and for what purposes that data is being used. This project is called IHAN and in many ways it can be compared to another international standard, IBAN that stands for International Bank Account Number. In a nutshell, IHAN is aiming to enable human-driven data economy. What exactly would this human-driven data economy look like? That's what this panel discussion is about. So please pay attention. This is probably the most important discussion anywhere near you in at least about the next 15 minutes. My name is Jukka Vahti and I work as a communication specialist at Citra. And uh, we have asked our panelists to bring with them a picture that would somehow represent their perspective to the question, what does human-driven data economy look like. Let's see which picture comes up next. Just going forward. Here we go. It seems that first up we have Mr. Timo Alivehmos from Nokia Technologies. And uh, to get straight to the point, please share us your thoughts on what we are seeing here. All right, thank you and, and good afternoon everybody. Well, I thought that uh, there is a good time to bring in the problem statement. I'm not saying that the lady itself is the problem, but the problem really is the data. Because we, the, we expect that uh, the persons are able to, to manage that data by themselves, which is definitely too much, uh, because there is a lot of data, and it's not just the healthcare data. This data is very fragmented, and as we have heard already, that the data is behind of uh, complicated APIs. And if those APIs are difficult for the developers to manage, just think about how difficult those same APIs or the same data is for the people to manage for themselves. So there is a really, really big problem. And that's why I think that we need structures. And those structures may be called standards, they may be called some other things. And uh, it's also so that the, it's, it's now it's the good time to start. We need to start with some concrete things. We need to start something which we can work uh, together with. 
And uh, that's why we don't have any time to waste, I think. So that's why we are in here. We need to build some structures how we can make this data usable and also uh, manageable for the people themselves. Okay, thank you. Let's see which picture <coughs> comes next. Okay, it seems that next up we have Mr. Antti Kivela from Citra. Okay, the <coughs> hello, this is... Uh, the picture is, uh, is that's my ship on Lake Päijänne. And then uh, the body of the ship is <coughs> built in, in Russia in 1905. What is <coughs> that's doing with data? In, in fact, it's, it's today it's collect data. And it's also to share data. Because there's a sonar system, which is, so, see, <coughs> I can see that, and, and it's also to collect data if there is under the, Ship or how deep is the water and so and, and then when I'm giving that data to the cloud and if everybody else do that so we have a full picture about the situation in, in on Lake Bayanne also where the fish are <clears throat> so basically that is the idea about this that if we share data together we get the better picture about the situation and and, and that is I think that's a good idea that we should share data, but also I can, as captain of that ship, <coughs> I can decide when the data is on. So you'd like to be the captain of the data as well as the ship? Yes, okay. uh, captain uh, word is the <coughs> law in the ship. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, uh, Miss Johanna Arola from Finn Biobank. What does human-driven data economy look like from the Biobank's perspective? Well, you can, uh, bio, from Biobank perspective, uh, we have a unique system in Finland. We have 10 Biobanks and they are reachable through one-stop shop, this bio, Finn Biobank. And, and the research is getting faster, it's getting sustainable, it's the quality of the data and, 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 and research is higher. But is it participatory? When you, uh, when you give a consent, she gives a consent uh, and donates her sample, we can combine the data from the health records and from the sample that she has donated through her personal PIN code. And, and what are we giving her back? What is, what is in return? Uh, it's... it's in the law already that she's allowed to know the use of her data and sample, she's allowed to contact the buyer bank, but we should give her more in the future. I think we should be more interactive in the future. Okay, thank you. And uh, last but not least, Mr. Teemu Suna from Nightingale Health, who seems to be spending quite a lot of time on the stage today. Uh, please, tell us about your picture. You only one slide. <laughs> Don't jump. Um, well, the, the point here why I wanted to, to put this picture uh, on the screen is, uh, is when we talk about data. As I said before also, it's, uh, it's not any data. It's not any data. It's not that simple. It's more complicated and it starts when we talk when we talk about healthcare, when we talk about diseases, it start starts from understanding the biology. And when we understand the biology, then we understand what data we need. But then the positive thing is that when we have that data, we can actually do very uh, very big things and, and, and change, change the healthcare. Okay, thank you. As we can see, there are tons of different perspectives to human driven data economy and to the usage of data altogether. And uh, I'd bet that today we can't even imagine half of the possibilities that lie ahead. Uh, what we do know is that there are many different global megatrends that are leading our way towards this new era of data economy. And let's take a quick round. Uh, why is now 
as year 2018, the right time for a project like IHAN, in your opinion? Maybe Antti would like to start. <clears throat> okay, there's a key DPR uh, and also in the finance sector, BSD, two directives coming valid in this year. And, and, and then we have a license to have all the data to us. And, and, and then, okay, I, I can receive my flying data or healthcare data or uh, in, in my driving data or whatever data <clears throat> to me. But what, how, can I, how I can handle that? And that was the conclusion in, in Citra that, that uh, as, as we do in, in IPAN system where we are handling our money. Uh, I, I used to be in the banking sector. There is no money in your account. There is a data, believe us. <coughs> and, and then you can transfer that data in, 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 in IPAN system. And we think that we should also to create the system that there is an account system IHAN, which where you can you decide where you transfer and, and you can give the license to use the data. And, and, and that is the idea behind of the, uh, this project which we are starting. And our aim is to make the, make the, the, the IHAN at least the European standard. And it's quite, we will see what's going to happen, but there's a heavy demand in these kind of things. And the time, <coughs> the window, time window is now open because Everybody is, is thinking that how we handle the BSD2 and, and GDPR and, and what is the cu <coughs> end customer role in that process. Okay. Yes, please. Yeah, yeah I, I want to continue from here. I, I think there are several things happening at the same time. And, and I think this makes it very exceptional. On the, on the other hand, kind of the information technology and... Uh, um, uh, kind of data processing there, the capabilities are kind of are very, at a very good level. We have kind of wireless technologies, mobile technologies. Um, we have the legislation is kind of catching up, new things are happening. But then also at the same time, the biotech is finally uh, catching up. So there are now technologies that can provide also the molecular data. And, and I think the power actually and why I believe that there is uh, uh, kind of there can be real results is that when all this is put together, uh, I think that's the power and I think that is also something when looking globally where Europe is actually leading the way. So I think it's very, very interesting time now. Okay. Any other thoughts on the timing? Yes, Johanna, please. Yeah, well, I'd just like to say that I, I wish we were there already. <laughs> I w wish we would see it ready already because, in, 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 for example, in a biobank, well, we really, this is really something that we are looking forward to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, we are, <clears throat> we are now, to, uh, the time is right to make these choices, and we are basically between two types of dystopias where, on one side, this whole business can, can, can get into some kind of an Orwellian situation or then some other type of a dystopia and it's not very easy to find the, the balance between all of these things. If you want to conceptualize this timing, what is, why it's so important today and when you look at the businesses or ecosystems, they are basically there are four borderlines. One is the laws of physics, one is the regulation that connects the business to the society, one is the, some kind of a collaboration like we are talking about standards in here that connects the technologies to, the bus to this business, and then the fourth dimension is the people themselves. And I think that there is a certain amount of maturity now in all of, this, all of these, in, in legislation as said, in people as said, and also in technologies. And now it's really the time to put all this picture together, and that's why we need to get started right now with these type of things. Okay, I think we could talk about this topic for about an hour or two or three, but we are really running out of time. So let's go to the last question, which would be that it's been said that we, we might be facing uh, nothing less than a data revolution or so. Uh, in your opinion, how does the role of a customer or patient or individual change? 
in the future or in the near, near future. Any thoughts on that? Uh, we <coughs> speak a lot about AI systems and all, all the benefits which we can receive for using these systems, but uh, we must take account that, that uh, people must give the license to use the data. We, we <coughs> and then but one crucial thing that we must trust the system. And I think that we don't trust the system which we are, if we don't have a feeling that we are controlling the data. So that, that is the one reason that, that um, I think we should make this happening so that the people are controlling data, they are giving the license to IE systems so that, and, and then they are receiving services. I don't believe that system, that there is an AI system which is controlling everything without our permission in, 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 in this Western democracy countries. It's a different story in some countries <clears throat> where there is a different system, but in, in these countries, I think that it's very crucial to keep all the, the trust in the part of the system. Okay. Yeah, so, so yeah, I, I, I agree. It's uh, what is actually happening, and, and what I believe it's uh, kind of a mega trend that that has already happened in several areas. But it's kind of getting stronger and stronger. Is this kind of um, individual power, or the power of individuals? They, um, there are several areas where kind of the individuals themselves can, um, um, can, can make a big difference. If looking at healthcare, there are many biohacking communities, but it's getting more and more into a direction where actually individuals find ways how to treat themselves better. And that can be sometimes very conflicting to the current healthcare system. So I think there are two a bit conflicting forces happening and the power is moving from the systems towards the individuals. And now what I think we need to do is to em embrace this. We, we don't have to kind of uh, forbid it or deny it. We need to build the regulations in a way that they support this change. Yes, Johanna, please. Well, I'm, I'm a medical doctor, and, and for me, the customer is patient, and I want them to benefit from this. And it, I, think, I think it's crucial that something happens inside, the, you know, that they are activated and they, they are involved and, and, and they are in the, in the process. So it's crucial. Okay. And Timo, you have the yeah, last word. Yeah, well, uh, I would say that it's opposite. To me, a pa patient or a person is a customer. And uh, I think that the whole revolution here is that, uh, that uh, very much aligned with this, that uh, it's the customer that uh, gets the new role now. Mm. And uh, we are calling in telecommunication, we, are co we used to call the people subscribers, and in healthcare, we used to call them uh, patients but uh, it's going to the direction where we actually all are becoming customers, people and customers, instead of patients and subscribers. Of course, the technical people who are dealing with these things w may have a different opinion, but that's how, where the revolution is. So it's not that, uh, for instance, like the Stone Age didn't end because of running out of stone, but it, it ended because of new materials, new, ma new technologies. And the same thing, this, this current way of thinking of the society today through materials, through money, things like that, is not ending because of lack of money or lack of materials, but we will get a new source of, uh, of, of uh, value, which is very much related to this data, information, knowledge, wisdom, that's we need, that we need to nurture now. And that's why we need these structures. We need the standards. We need IHAN. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry. I think we are standing in the middle of these people and a coffee break, so we'll have to wrap it up. But just to let you know, this, was, this is not the end of the discussion. This is the beginning of the discussion. <laughs> We'd be happy to continue on this topic at our lounge, right in the middle of the whole room. And you can recognize it by this weird giant hand
in our lounge. So please feel welcome to come to talk to us. We'll see you there. Thank you to our panelists. Thank you, audience. <clears throat> this is Thank also, you, you can uh, together or tweet, make a tweet. <laughs> yes. Okay. Thank you.